tonight on KSL Outdoors. There? Yep, got it. A late winter trip to one of the most scenic fly fishing destinations in the West. Pretty good fish. Fishing Lee's Ferry with Lee's Ferry Anglers. I'm Adam Eagle and this is KSL Outdoors. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eagle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Hey, welcome to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam along with Mickey. And Mickey, it's a little chilly up here. Let's go south. <laughs> Let's go south. It's going to be warm down there. Yeah. Hey, we're headed to a place that you and I went, I don't know, it's, I don't know, five, six years ago. Yeah. Beautiful place. Yeah, and it, it's changed. It'll be interesting to see what the changes are with the invasive brown trout. <laughs> That's right. Hey, we're headed to Lee's Ferry and a uh, little bit of issue going on down there, but we're going down to catch some fish and uh, we'll investigate the brown trout. <laughs> Let's go. Lee's Ferry sits at the base of the Vermilion Cliffs National Monument, just downstream from Lake Powell and Glen Canyon Dam, in one of the West's most spectacular settings. The neatest thing about Lee's Ferry is it's the last free-flowing rim in the Glen Canyon. Right at Lee's Ferry is where Grand Canyon National Park begins. Of course, all the rest of Lake Powell covered up the rest of Glen Canyon. But you get to see what it looked like before, before the lake, and it's pretty spectacular. Literally, it's a, something you have to experience. As you well know, photographs or even, even your film doesn't really do it justice. Our first stop is Cliff Dweller's Lodge to meet up with Wendy Gunn who along with her husband Terry, have been fishing, guiding, and hosting travelers here since 1989. Cliff Dwellers Lodge and Lee's Ferry Anglers, we're full service. We have everything. We have a restaurant that during season we offer you know, food from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m., seven days a week. We have the gas station, convenience store, fly shop with knowledge, rental equipment, guide service. So yeah, it's a one-stop shop. Something I've been using a lot of lately, of course, is gonna be you know, that scud there, the ginger scud. Our guide is Jimmy Daniel, who came to Lee's Ferry six seasons ago and fell in love with the fishing and the slick rock. It's the rocks and the view that you don't get anywhere else. You know, I mean, you gotta think about, we've got tourists from all over the world come just to look in the canyon, and then here we get to fish where they're looking down to see us. One thing I like about this river, being I'm a southern boy, is all the waterfowl. Um, there's pretty much every species of waterfowl, with the exception of blue wing and green wing teal, on this river at one point during the year. It's pretty neat. Well, let's get going. You know, I've fished all over the world from Alaska to Canada to New Zealand. And the beauty of Lee's Ferry is unmatched. Every boat ride takes my breath away. I would bet that John Wesley Powell felt the same when he came down Glen Canyon some 150 years ago. Lee's Ferry is a blue ribbon wild rainbow trout fishery. From the ramp, it's 16 miles until you run into Glen Canyon Dam. This is kind of our where we can stop and look, so we'll stop and I'll put the anchor out and get ready to fish here. We wanted to take a closer look at the dam and with the deeper water, Jimmy thought the best technique here isn't with a fly rod, so he handed us some spinning rods. If you come out, you know, and you've got a treble hook, they just ask that you pinch them off, and of course you pinch your barb. So you just got the one single hook with no barb on there. That's what the law requires here on the river, so super important. Keeps a good catch and release fishery healthy. Oh, fish on. There you go. Little guy. Let me get the net for us. Little rainbow. Oh, it just clobbered it. Yeah, it did. Skunk is off on, after about three minutes of cast. What, don't they have nice colors here? Yeah, they're beautiful. About what, 13 inches, 14? Yeah, that's a nice one. All right, yeah. And away she goes. Back in the 80s, Lee's Ferry was one of the best rainbow trout fisheries in the world. Back then, anglers didn't talk inches. They talked 
pounds. It was very common to see 12, 15 pound rainbows come out of that river. And then in those days, the limit was 10 fish. There were limits of rainbows that came out that were in excess of 100 pounds. There we go. I think I got a rainbow. We don't have many of the giant fish, but we've still got lots of nice sized rainbows. And something that's really cool too is they're essentially wild fish because they haven't stocked there since the 90s. There you go. Nice job, Mick. Told you I'd bring you to them. We'll dive deeper into the techniques to having a successful trip to Lee's Ferry up ahead. We'll even grab a few on a fly rod. Get him. There you go. Good shot, man. But first, let's check out this week's climate quiz question. Rising 710 feet above bedrock within the steep rust-colored sandstone walls of Glen Canyon is where you find Glen Canyon Dam. The dam was constructed to harness the power of the Colorado River in order to provide for the water and power needs of millions of people in the West. It would take 2.5 million tons of coal or 11 million barrels of oil each year to generate the same amount of power that Glen Canyon Dam produces. Our climate quiz question tonight is, how many kilowatt hours of power does Glen Canyon Dam's power plant produce annually? Now, once you know the answer, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us the correct answer. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner, set to receive a Climate Static V sleeping pad. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, will be right back to Lee's Ferry. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith & Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. Get him. There, there you is. go. Good shot, man. Pretty good fish. Just keep working him this way. You got his head up. Aim him this way. Oh, a beautiful little male fish there. Gorgeous male. There we go. Huh? Finally got a fish. Nice. All right. All right. On the worm. Love it. Fly fishing can be done by boat or on shore. There are over 20 different bars you can beach your boat and fish from. One more. One more? Yep. Good. Now mend and slack. There you go. That's his jam right there. Watch him. He's going, you're going to get him. He's right there, right at the bottom. Oh, oh no. I saw him eat it. I can see him right there. Yeah, he's still sitting over there. Oh, man. I Good saw stuff. that fish move on it. Good stuff. Let's check those flies. The guides at Lee's Ferry are great and knowledgeable, and I'd recommend hiring a guide the first time you come out. All right, Mickey, how have you done? The river is big and not like anything up north other than maybe the Green River below Flaming Gorge. There you go. Once you've learned a few things from the guides, you can then rent a boat from Lee's Ferry Anglers for your next trip and go it alone. Something I've done a few times with buddies and had great success. The advantage to coming here and renting a boat from us is that we've got the jet boats versus the prop boats. You know, and there's nowhere in the Lee's Ferry section that I would consider even a class one rapid. There's no real big rapids here, it's safe. If you can look at the current and follow the tongue, you'll never be in a bad spot. If you don't want to rent a boat or a guide, you can always try your luck on the walk-in section right there at the ramp at Lee's Ferry. That's a nice fish, Adam. Try to keep his head up out of the grass. Get his head up, bud. They're getting that river current and they, uh... You mind getting that hook for me? Yeah, and they got some power. He hit the scud, huh? Yeah, he was hooked on the scud. He's still, he's still going good. And, no. Got it. <laughs> Love the sight fishing, man. It's just funny. <laughs> I mean, that boy? Fish. Fish, huh? I like sight casting a nice leaves, very rainbow. Yeah. Hey, if you had a time of year to be up here, what time of year would you come? I'd love to be here in the fall. You know, really? the fall's the best time to be here. The fish have fed all summer and they're big and they're they're feisty and uh, the weather's cooler than it is in Phoenix in the fall. So 
it's a good time to be here. And you guys also have a, a pretty good cicada hatch here. Absolutely, our cicada hatch is great. That's uh, usually in July, you hit it and you can, you know, the guy that likes the dry fly take, they just, they really get after it. Okay, should we let this fish go? Absolutely. It really doesn't matter if you're a fly or spin fisher. Everyone can catch fish here, but a little advice. When you do come down, stop fishing every once in a while and look up. It's not very often you get a fish of tailwater under 1,000 foot sandstone cliffs. Just a neat fish. All of them have their own little characteristics here. This one just has a bunch of fine spots. It's beautiful. Well, if you love Lake Powell like I do, um, it's kind of a bucket list for my family to come below the Glen Canyon Dam and check it out from below. It's a, quite a neat perspective down here to think back at the technology back in the 50s and 60s to build that thing. And then you'd even think back further to John Wesley Powell when he came down the Colorado River. Hey, we'll have more here at least here in a moment, but first let's uh, head over to Mickey now for tonight's Fish Tech Fish Report. Hey, we're down here on the Colorado River catching some gorgeous rainbows on real heavily weighted streamers, sink tip lines, and real deep nymph rigs. The key to catching these fish is throwing a real long distance cast. If you're out on a big river, you're throwing sink tip lines and real heavily weighted flies. If you do your same dry fly cast, you could break your rod or you could tangle it up. Now what I mean by the standard dry fly cast is the rod is gonna move from right here at your stop position. As you or start it moving forward, you accelerate when the rod is at its highest point and accelerate to a stop. If you do that with this big of a fly, you can break your rod. Watch this cast. See how the fly falls under the rod? That's gonna tangle you up or you might even hit the rod and break the rod. The fly cast that you actually need to do brings the rod through a full arc. I'm going to bring it all the way back behind me and make a good stop here. Now my acceleration forward is going to go all the way. I'm going to start accelerating right here and accelerate all the way through to the end. Moving the rod through the full arc, the acceleration starts all the way back, goes all the way forward, back and forward. Hey, hopefully this casting tip will help you cast some real big flies on really big water. Hey, for these tips and a whole lot more, come on down to Fish Tech and we'll help you out. Now for tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. You know, ever since Glen Canyon Dam was put here in the 60s, it's a dam up the Colorado River to form Lake Powell. The river below the Glen Canyon has always been a rainbow trout fishery. Well, now another species is showing up. Anglers and even guides are pretty excited, but the National Park Service, not so much. There? Yep, got him. Nice. Decades ago, brown trout were stocked in the Colorado River in the Grand Canyon. Historically, very few were caught at Lee's Ferry, but lately, anglers have been seen and catching more browns on the river. Right now, they feel that the population of brown trout is 3% or less of the total population of fish in the river. The National Park Service is very concerned because of the endangered species that live in the Colorado River down in the Grand Canyon. It's very important for everybody to understand these endangered species live approximately 80 miles downstream from Lee's Ferry. The main stem of the Colorado River in the upper reaches is too cold for the humpback chubs to exist. The National Park Service is planning on electroshocking Lee's Ferry in an effort to eliminate the brown trout. The brown trout removal is just part of an effort to remove all potential invasive aquatic threats in the system. Anglers, including Terry, are concerned Very pretty, though. the electroshocking will be detrimental not only to the wild rainbow trout fishery, but the local economy as well. I would go so far as to say the angling public is really mad about this, this concept of, of mechanical removal of brown trout at least Ferry. And they have spoken out and uh, there were hundreds many hundreds of letters written in opposition to the Nat National Park Service conducting mechanical removal at Lee's Ferry. We're all skeptical that it would have any effect whatsoever um, on the brown trout population. And second of all, I think that even if it didn't harm the rainbow trout fishery, that uh, 
to the general public that it would look really bad for, for the fishery. So every angler I know is very opposed to the, the entire concept and we're hoping that the National Park Service can come to another conclusion on what, what they're going to do with the brown trout. Before you make any attempt to control the brown trout, why don't you find out what the problem is? Why are they there? What has changed? I got one. And perhaps you can make an altercation there that would uh, affect the population. But nobody even knows for sure why the brown trout are there. Boy, people have never been down here. It's really about the beauty of this place. Right. Yeah. Don't you like it, me? I mean. Yeah, it's gorgeous when you look around all the rocks, the, the water, the, I mean, everything. Ducks, you herons. Look. Ducks, yeah. <laughs> and beautiful fish. And look the at fish. the colors on those fish. They're just gorgeous. Yeah, they're pretty. Aren't they just neat? I think mine's bigger though. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Definitely get down here when you do come down, check out the guns here at Lee's uh, Ferry Angler and uh, give Jimmy, our buddy, a call. That's right. Give you're, Captain Jim a call. You're here <laughs> all season, right? I'm here all year long now. Nice. I actually moved out here, so I'm here all year long. Like the rocks so much, I couldn't leave. Pretty soon he'll be a <laughs> westerner. Hey, more here coming up in a moment, but first, let's check out this week's Utah Field Guide. A short three quarter of a mile hike brings you to one of the West's most spectacular overlooks. Horseshoe Bend on the Colorado River is just downstream from Lake Powell and Glen Canyon Dam. The Colorado River makes a spectacular meander around a rock promontory, creating this impressive horseshoe shaped loop that is beloved by visitors from around the world. The overlook is at 4,200 feet above sea level and the Colorado River is at 3,200 feet, making it a 1,000 foot drop to the green waters of the Colorado River. Goosebumps are guaranteed. Standing on the edges of the canyon cliffs can make even the strongest of men a bit weak in the knees. The distant panoramic horizon views down Glen Canyon can be mesmerizing. If you're afraid of heights, don't get too close to the cliff edges. There are no handrails. Horseshoe Bend is an awe-inspiring view and will leave you awestruck as you capture some spectacular snapshots. For more information on places like Horseshoe Bend, Check out our Utah Field Guide on our outdoors page at ksltv.com. Boy, what a beautiful March day. It's, you know, 40, 50 degrees back home, 70 down here. I probably should have wore some sunscreen. I did not. Hey, let's check that recreation forecast now for your next outdoor adventure by turning it over to the guys and gals in the weather department. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here on the banks of the Colorado River. Don't forget, if you're looking to get your friends, your family into the out of doors, check our outdoors calendar page on our website at ksltv.com. Just a nice fish, huh? Yeah, she's good looking. Yeah, pretty typical, nice fight, and boy, I love that beautiful stripe on those rainbows. A beautiful stripe, usually got a few more spots than this one, but uh, she's still very beautiful. Yeah, wanna let her go? Absolutely. Hey, don't forget when you come down here, it's really hard to take a bad picture, but when you do, bring, a, bring your camera, submit a snapshot of your catch of the beautiful scenery through our snapshot contest, you might win our big prize from Camp Chef. Hey, and there she goes, beautiful. Hey, time now to turn it over to you for the best of the week, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with some off-season success for Tyler. We all know the fly fisher who puts their gear away during the winter, but not Tyler. Here he is with a nice brown trout and whitefish off the middle Provo. Kara was out hunting with her husband Brian and decided to pose with her first ever pheasant this hen. On the second photo, Kara could have sworn that this hen pheasant had moved. Kurt has a keen eye and a cool neighborhood. Kurt spotted this nice tom strutting and getting ready for spring and this doe who was taking a peep inside his living room. Kurt's bulldog goes a bit slow, but finally heard the ruckus and decided to take a look. Justin took his two sons ice fishing at Vernon this year, and it was his seven-year-old Connor who not only netted the first fish of the trip, but the biggest of the day with this 19-inch brown. But our winner tonight bested his biggest laker by about well, 26 pounds. Brian Holt usually chases fish at Flaming Gorge from shore, but back in early March, his buddy Shane took him out on his boat on a cold morning for some hot fishing. Fishing with downriggers for Lakers was something Brian had never done. That morning, they boated a 7, a 15, a 23, and this 28-pound Mac that had a 14-inch kokanee in its throat. A cool catch, even better story, Brian, as you just hauled in our big prize for having 
the snapshot of the week. Remember, submit your pictures or video plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins a Camp Chef portable barbecue grill, perfect for any outdoor cooking. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. Build your outdoor kitchen with Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Little guy. I'm sure glad I bought this spinning rod. That yeah. little marabou jig caught a lot of fish today. That was perfect. Yeah, you could cover a lot of water. That was, a, I think, a big advantage to fishing this, is being able to cover the water and getting that long cast. Yeah. And Jimmy, for people, if they initially come down here, they probably need to hire a guide before Absolutely. they come do this by themselves. Yeah, I tell people when they come, you know, if you come your first time, hire a guide, second time, hire a guide, and after that, maybe take a rental boat and check in with us, you know, to yeah. see how everything's going. Yeah, stop by the fly shop, pick up the right flies, and Hopefully after a couple times you'll know what to do. That's right. There were a lot of places that we fished that I think without a guide, I wouldn't have seen. Yeah, it had right. taken us two or three days to figure this out. Right. Well, it's a good time. And if you want to check out, maybe you want to come down and fish with Captain Jimmy here. The website is? www.leesferry.com. Pretty simple. Get down here and enjoy the beautiful scenery, the beautiful fish, and bring your family, your friends, and make some memories outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle for Mickey and Jimmy. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.